Wow, thank you. Welcome to Conscious Evolution Media Live, coming to you from Denver, Colorado, from our studios. And uh, we are also streaming live on Channel 56 on Comcast, as well as streaming on ConsciousEvolutionMedia.com. I'm your host and moderator, Coach Steve Toth, and uh, our team today is a couple of my favorites, actually. <laughs> the first one is meditation, so we're going to be exploring meditation, and the second one is spiritual, dis um, spiritual uh, discernment. So um, let me introduce our guest for today, and our guest today is Christian R. Long. He's an energy healer and also a flow coach, and he lives actually in our backyard. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Where are you living in our backyard? Pretty close by. I'm actually living in the Highlands in Denver, so I'm okay. probably a hop, skip, and a jump from here. Fantastic. So let's pick up with um, meditation because it's such an interesting subject, I think, in these days. Uh, I come across a lot of people that, you know, we do a lot of shows and we talk about meditation, and even when I'm in person with someone and we talk about meditation, people... A lot of people roll their eyes and they check out. Mm. What do you think that's about? What do I think that's about of why people check out when they uh -huh. hear about meditation? Because in a lot of ways, meditation requires a commitment. And a lot of people don't want to make a commitment. Mm. So that could be one reason. There's many, many reasons. Like relationships? Could that be connected? That would be connected, yeah. sure. But when people say meditation and they go, wow, I want more peace. I want more stillness. I want more joy and happiness. I want to evolve my soul. But wait a minute. You want me to actually sit down for a period of time mm -hmm. every single day for the rest of my life and dedicate to that? Mm, maybe not so much. <laughs> okay. So what's kind of coming to me right now about relationships is maybe this has to do with the relationship uh, with the self mm -hmm. meditation and mm -hmm. um, so why I kind of view it from a place where it feels to me that it's how I get access to the true me mm -hmm. do you experience it that way um, I experience it on one level um, I've been at this point meditating for about 15 years I've put in over 2500 hours into meditation and healing retreats mm -hmm. I've been teaching meditation for over 10 years and I've seen a lot of people come and go, and, and it's the purpose of meditation is to have a merging of the lower self with the higher self, and it doesn't mm -hmm. happen in one or two weeks, one or two months. It happens over a lifetime. What, what do you mean by lower, lower and higher? Because people might be wondering. Yeah, sure. So, so you have your physical body, mm -hmm. then you have your emotional body, you have your mental body, and all of those bodies come from the incarnated soul, which is there's a giving the credit to my teacher, Grandmaster Cho Koksui, that insertion point is 12 inches above the crown. So that's our incarnated self that is always going back to the source of where it came from. So the incarnated self goes back to the higher self, goes back to the divine spark, and ultimately reemerges with God. Okay. So when you mean crown, what do you mean by that? So the crown is located on the top of the head. Mm -hmm. So when people think of God, or they're aware of God, or they're aware, aware of the unseen or unknown forces that are interpermeating -per every aspect of our lives, they're activating and energizing the crown chakra. So if you're a nun or a yogi or priest or rabbi or someone who has dedicated their life to spiritual work, in general, your crown chakra is very, very activated, very, very energized. It's the entry point for spiritual energy in your life. Okay. So I want to make sure I insert this because mm -hmm. uh, we're not a religious organization, mm -hmm. uh, nor this is a religious show. Actually, the two things that we don't do on our network and our shows is religion is mm -hmm. one and politics is the other. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, anybody that's viewing the show now and in the future, just insert whatever people want to insert in the place of God, because it doesn't matter what we call it, right? Does it? Um, does it matter? Hmm. Yes and no. And what I, the reason I say that is... Some people freak out when you uh, say God, that immediately brings in religion. Right, because people are identified with the object they're looking at the finger which is the word and they're not looking at where that finger or word is pointing to right so for instance i could say to you hey you you're going to respond to me one way but i can say hey steve you're going to respond to me a different way so um, by mitigating the connection that we have to god it's mitigating our connection to that so wouldn't necessarily recommend it doing this for many many years 
having a lot of higher experiences, recognizing God is very, very important. And it's, mm. it's not about religion. Religion is esoteric teachings. What I'm talking about are exoteric. So I'm what sorry, do we do with the people that are not believing in God? Are they excluded from this? No, absolutely not, uh -huh. because we're all influenced by it. That's like saying, uh, well, I don't believe in exercise. I don't think exercise will improve my life or imp improve my physical body. Well, that's irrelevant. If you exercise, your physical body will be improved. If you meditate, your connection to your lower self and your higher self will improve, regardless whether you believe in it or not. Mm. Okay. So let's see if we can, um, we can experiment with something. Mm -hmm. So in your experience, like when you first got into meditation, mm -hmm. what was it that got you to the place of actually doing it mm. versus just yeah, yeah. entertaining the idea? Excellent question. Excellent question. So for many, many years, I was very much fascinated and interested in the physical world, the physical body. So everything I did was personal training, nutrition. I was a spinning instructor. Everything I did was about improving the physical body. And then when I was 19 years old, I happened to end up working at a spa called the Maharishi Ayurvedic Center in Lancaster, Massachusetts. And they recommended, they said, if you work here, we like everyone to be part of this meditation practice. And, I, and at that time, I knew nothing about meditation. I knew very little about spirituality. And I said, sure, I'm game, personal development, let's go for it. And I remember I was 19 years old. It was the day after my birthday. I went into the, the place where I learned from my meditation teacher. She gave me my mantra or sound to practice. And she said, close your eyes, use this mantra. And 20 minutes later, it's like I went somewhere else. And I came, and came out of that experience going to her, where did I go? What happened? And she was like, well, you just had a, a deep experience of connecting to your higher self. And I was like, huh. And right then and there, in that moment, in that moment, it changed my life because I, because I was like, why, don't every, why doesn't everyone do this? Why doesn't everyone meditate? Why doesn't everyone just sit still and be aware of the self? And then that started me on a path. But I give props to the people who have been meditating for 10, 15, 20 years who have none of those experiences, have no deeper connection, but there's something within them that says, you know what, this is what, something I'm committed to in sitting and doing their prayer or their meditation or whatever the case may be. Mm. All right, so what I'm hearing in between the lines there is that there is no right way or wrong way to meditate. Is that accurate? Uh, every meditation has a different effect within this with the, with the soul so that's like saying is there a right and wrong way to exercise yes is there a right and wrong way for nutrition in your life yes are there better and less better ways to meditate absolutely mm -hmm. interesting which nobody ever wants to talk about because so, everyone's like yeah it's all good yeah just whatever whatever you feel like doing man you want to close your eyes and just be still yeah you want to light up a joint yeah it's all good but no there are better mm. ways and not so good ways to meditate or connect with the higher self mm. absolutely okay so in in terms of development spiritual development mm -hmm. um have have you noticed anything that in general applies to most human beings where do they begin to asking themselves the question, why am I here? Mm -hmm. What am I supposed to be doing? Mm -hmm. What's the purpose of my life? Mm -hmm. And um, how do I get on with, with this thing? Okay, excellent question. So what you're talking about would be contemplation, right? Mm -hmm. So there's different forms of meditation. You have contemplation, you have concentration, you have awareness. So it depends on what purpose you're in this life to do. And then there's also, as the old saying goes, different paths to God that some are easier to fall into. So for instance, you have bhakti or the path of devotion. So it could be just being, just being expressed and having this deep overflowing love and gratitude for God and, and all sentient beings. That could be your path. That could be your path to reaching enlightenment, to obtaining higher levels of consciousness. But let's say your path is that of a karma yogi or someone who does service to have oneness with the self? Or what if they're very, very mental and very intellectual people, then they would do the path of Raja or Yana Yoga where they're using the mind to contemplate on God. So there's many, diff many different paths and you're saying, well, what is the fundamental? Like what, what can we all apply? The meditation that I've been practicing for over a decade that continues to get more profound, continues to get deeper and gives me greater and greater insights into who I am 
and why I am here would be the Twin Hearts Meditation that I learned from my teacher over a decade ago. And it falls fundamental, fundamental principles of how we are set up, how we are connected to our divine selves. Very, very powerful meditation. Okay, so, so doing what I've been doing for the 10 years, which is the last 10 years, which is these type of shows, mm -hmm. what, what I'm noticing that what I'm becoming more and more about is to help people to, to, to have them <clears throat> look inside of themselves. Because everybody, including myself, I've been looking outside of myself, looking for the shiny objects. Right. And I got lots of shiny objects, and none of them satisfied me, sure. ultimately. Sure. Um, so I see meditation as a way to make that happen for people if they open to it. Mm -hmm. Like, people are wondering, OK, so how do I go inside of me? Like, mm -hmm. I hear what you're saying, mm -hmm. but please help me. How do I actually do that? OK. When I first started meditating, for actually for the first several years of me meditating, meditation was an escape for me because I had a tremendous amount of emotional pain in my life that, that I didn't want to connect to the outside world. So I was using meditation as an escape to get away from my thoughts, to get away from my emotions, even from pains I was having in my physical body. So my path isn't necessarily um, like other people's path because other people live in a lot of stress, a lot of negative thoughts, negative emotions that they're generating from themselves or they're putting themselves into that kind of environment. So what I can say is it takes time to sit down, to be still, and to practice, to practice meditation to get the answers to those questions of who am I and why am I here. Um, but it's doing it from a state of I want to connect as opposed to I want to disconnect. My objective was to disconnect from society. My objective was to disconnect from people, situations, and things that were causing me a lot of pain. So, and, and I pretty much figured out that, wait a minute, I'm meditating for the benefit of humanity. I'm not meditating just to get what I want. I'm not medica meditating just to merge with my higher self and forget everyone else. Mm. But it took me a while to figure that out. Okay, but it also has connected you with who you really are. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Okay. The reason and people don't know who they are, Steve, is because they have so much stuff in their energy body, in their aura, in their thoughts, their emotions, that they cannot sit still and hear the whisper of their soul. They cannot sit still and feel the presence of their, of their selves mm. because they're enmeshed and clouded with so much garbage. Well, you know, I just wonder, how our design is and how are we designed as, as human beings because if you look around mm -hmm. um, a very large percentage of humanity is doing what you just described which mm -hmm. is almost like acting like robots mm -hmm. we <laughs> we do the same thing every day <laughs> we get up mm -hmm. you know do our stuff go mm -hmm. to the bathroom brush our teeth mm -hmm. have breakfast go to work sure and you know go through the day come home eat watch tv go to bed and we repeat it the next day. Right. So, and, and for a lot of people, they have to do that. At least for me, I had to do it for several decades before I asked the question, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> There's something yeah. off for me in this practice because, yeah. I mean, it's interesting, but I'm like tired of it and sick of it. Mm -hmm. There has to be more. So that's like really the words, I mm -hmm. think, that it's kind of common for people. Mm -hmm. There has to be more than this. Mm -hmm. And there is. What is it? There absolutely is. There's greater levels of fulfillment. There's greater levels of inner peace, inner joy. There's greater levels of insight into the reality of the world because um, I'm sure we're all familiar with the movie The Matrix, right? So Neo is living in The Matrix. He takes the red pill and he comes out of that level of reality, that level of understanding into a higher level of truth. It's not to say this down here is wrong. It's just to say this is a higher level of truth that we're perceiving it from. So when a person sits down and they have a nice, solid, consistent meditation practice, all the negative thoughts, negative emotions that are clouding their perception to themselves and the rest of the world, they can go, wow, there is a tremendous amount of beauty. There is a tremendous amount of joy. There's a tremendous amount of inner peace available right now. We are swimming in this very moment, everyone watching this, whether you're at home, whether you're in the studio audience, whether it's you or I, right now we are swimming in an ocean of energy. We are swimming in an ocean of prosperity, an ocean of peace, an ocean of love. It's our responsibility as 
human beings and our souls to connect to that, to be open and receptive to that, period. Okay, so as you were describing this, my, my body is still buzzing. Mm -hmm. So that tells me this would be a good time to demonstrate something to the viewers, if mm -hmm. you're willing and mm -hmm. open. Yeah, sure. What would you like to demonstrate? So I was thinking about this at the house, and I've seen this um, presented many, many times, and I wanted to, a big thing I hear with people with meditation and why they don't do meditation is because they go, whenever I sit down, I start having all these negative thoughts, negative emotions, and, and I have the monkey mind. So I want to practice something with everybody. So if everyone could just sit up comfortably, whether they're at home or in the chairs, and bring their hands in front of their chest, and just feel the presence of their heart, right? So in the center of our chest, we have an energy center called the heart chakra, which is very, very important for spiritual development and connecting to our divine selves. So if we kind of elude, we exclude that, we're not going to have that connection. So just imagine you're feeling the energy in your front heart chakra. See, if, see what you notice, some warmth, some tingling, Okay, and just hold your hand still for a minute. And now be aware of something that makes you smile. A happy event. Something from your childhood. Something from present time. If you can't think of anything that makes you happy, makes you feel good, borrow a thought or a feeling from the person next to you. Okay, something that puts a smile on your face. And just be aware what is happening. Be aware of the love in your heart. Be aware of the joy in your heart. Do you notice something? Do you notice a warmth expanding, a tingling around your hands? Maybe a pressure pushing your hands out? Okay, and then just bring your hands down. And be aware of how you feel. Do you feel calmer? Do you feel more peaceful? Do you feel more joy? So that's an aspect of opening up the heart center, opening up the center of joy, of love, of inner peace that has a healing effect on ourselves, on each other, and also opens up a better connection to our divine selves. So if when we are not connected to our hearts mm -hmm. and, and to our higher self, I don't know better words to use right now. That's correct. Yeah. Um, if we're not connected to that, then what are we connected to? It's not that we're not connected to it. It's the degree of connection. Okay. Right? The difference between, say, you or I and a saint, quanti um, qualitatively, we're all connected to God. The saint, you and I, we're all connected to God. Quantitatively, that's the difference. The degree of connection. Mm. A saint is much more connected than we are. And you can see that. It's self-evident by looking at the life of a saint. Could you go without sleep, without food, keep serving, giving, loving, doing miracles? I'm not there. I don't know about you. Mm. But it's qualitatively. It's not quantitatively. Just like qualitatively. I'm so tested every day. Yeah, every, every, sure. Every hour. Right? I believe Ram Dass said, if you think you're enlightened, <laughs> spend the weekend with your family. But it's like, <laughs> if, we're all from, if we're all from the ocean, right? We're all from a drop. Quant qualitatively, we're, a drop of water in the ocean qualitatively are the same but quantitatively they're different. So as you expand your energy center, you expand your heart and your other chakras, and you're able to connect to God and to your higher self, that capacity expands. Your ability to love more expands. Your ability to do greater service, to be a greater instrument, to, to help and solve problems of the world improves. But if you think you're disconnected, if you think you're very small and you're no good and you have negative thoughts, negative emotions, your energy is very, very weak, very, very small. So you don't, think that we go in and out of consciousness um, during during the day when we're in awake. and out of consciousness in terms of in terms of um, gee how can I how can I put better words to this okay so I had experiences in my life when I felt so connected that I didn't feel the disconnection so when I feel the disconnection mm -hmm. is when when I get challenged by a situation that I'm in, gotcha. uh, especially, you know, the dramas of life, mm -hmm. you know, how we create drama and, sure. you know, we activate each other and then you right. say something and I'll say something and then 
and then I don't choose the higher road. I, yeah. I don't know how better ex to explain that. Mm -hmm. But I end up doing the ego boxing with you. Right. And by the time I notice that I'm doing it, it's too late because I'm already doing it. Yeah. <laughs> so I call that disconnection. Okay. Yeah. I, I forgot for a period of time that there is something more important and valuable to me, and that is to be connected to love and to my heart. Right. I forgot. Yeah. Okay. I, lo I love how you use the word connected. So there was something in the, um, the Indian tradition. It's through all traditions but I'm just using the Indian tradition because of the, the terminology. So there's something called the Antakarana. The Antakarana is another word for the spiritual cord that we have coming from our incarnated self connecting to God, okay? The bigger that cord is, the more everything that we have, the more spiritual energy that we have coming into our lives. But in those moments of unconsciousness, as you put it, that spiritual cord, that Antakarana connection is very, very small. It's the the thickness of a spider web, to my understanding. So that way, the lower nature takes over. The greed, the um, wh whatever, whatever negative emotions or negative thoughts you can think of, the lower nature takes over. So we become unconscious. That's why we murder each other. Mm -hmm. that's, why we, um, that's why we screw each other over in business. That's why we yell and argue and fight in our relationships is because that spiritual connection is very, very small. But if it's huge, if you ever see pictures of the saints or the great, great teachers or great avatars, look at their pictures and they always have what? A halo around them. What is that a representation of? A representation of their antakarana, their spiritual connection to God and to their higher selves. So what's the practice that you do when how do you manage yourself? Mm. Like, meditation every day. Oh. Meditation every day because that not only opens up that, that connection, that antakarana mm. to God and to my higher self, but it maintains it. Because right now you and I can have a super amazing, super profound, deep meditation together. But if you are not used to holding on to that connection, it's just going to go shh and get small again. So over time, not a couple months, not a couple years, but mm -hmm. over a lifetime, that, co that cord, that spiritual connection will be much, much bigger, much, much more expanded and allow for that downpour of spiritual energy, which is everything into your life. It feeds your mental body, your emotional body, your spiritual body. Without spiritual energy, there's nothing, period, nothing. That's where we come from. That's our source. Mm -hmm. To not identify with that, to not acknowledge that is, is ignorant. But hey, we're all at different levels of consciousness. Okay, yeah, I'll buy that. All right, so, so let's do. I am selling. <laughs> um, I'm buying. Yeah. Okay, so um, let's talk about chakras for for a moment because sure. that's another area like meditation that people get kind of confusion about. Sure. And how is all of that interrelated to uh, what we're talking about? Yeah, absolutely. So. I want to, again, give credit to my teacher, Master Chola. Without his knowledge about the chakra system, you and I would have really nothing to talk about. So 10 years ago, I was introduced to pranic healing and arhatic yoga. And pranic healing is, a, is basically a system, a comprehensive no-touch energy system that utilizes prana or energy to accelerate the body's natural ability to heal itself using the chakra system. So what is a chakra? Because I've met people, I'm not kidding you, Steve, I've met a person who spent 200 hours doing energy work and chakra work. And I said, where is this chakra located? How do you manipulate the chakra for healing purposes? And she could not answer it. And it's not a judgment against her, but it's just a demonstration that people are misinformed. And, it, and that's part of my purpose of, of why I'm here, is to help people with that, with that knowledge that I've been given. So that being said, a chakra is an energy center located all over the body. We don't just have seven. We don't just have 11. We have thousands of chakras. Mm. Within the world of pranic healing, we work with the 11 major chakras. So what is a chakra? It's an energy center that spins clockwise and counterclockwise. So why people only talk about seven most of the time? To my understanding, this is what, I, this is what I've been taught. The chakra system that we know, the seven chakra model that you hear in yoga studios and yoga places all over the country came from the Theosophy Society about 100 years ago. They wanted to introduce the ch seven chakra model for two reasons. One was for simplicity, two was for safety. Simplicity is, hmm, there's seven days of the week, there's seven notes of music, there's seven colors of the rainbow. This is an a, a, a world that no one knows about. So we need to make it easy for the general population to understand mm -hmm. so they can they tied it. 
seven chakras, seven everything else. Easy to remember. Also for safety, there are chakras left out of the seven chakra model that if you were to manipulate them, one of them being the main main chakra, if you were to manipulate it, it raises or lowers blood pressure. So think about it. If you know what that chakra is, but you don't know how to manipulate it properly, you could kill somebody. You could literally manipulate their blood pressure to keep raising and raising and raising, and then, and then they're dead. Right? So they did it for safety reasons as well. So that's why it's not, if you read any literature from the great books, the great texts, it does not say there are only seven. The key word is only. It doesn't say only. It says there are seven chakras. But there are also, if you look in other biblical texts, it says nine gates, it says 11, 12 fruits. What are they getting at? What, what is the essential teachings? And so that's what Master Choa revealed of, we worked with the 11 major chakras to accelerate people's healing, physical healing, emotional healing, mental healing. So as a pranic healer, my job is to go into the chakra system to clean it out and to energize it with fresh energy, fresh prana. That's why we get sick, because the chakras aren't functioning. So when we sit and we meditate, depending upon the type of meditation, it pulls down a tremendous amount of energy into the crown chakra, and then it cleans out the energy body, the crown chakra, the forehead, ajna, etc. So with a cleaner system, everything else is better. Everything. Everything in your life from an energetic perspective, if your chakras are clean, everything else improves. Finances, relationships, health, spirituality, doesn't matter. If the chakras are malfunctioning, congested, and not working optimally, your life will suffer. So where, where, uh, where does this energy come from, and how do you become an instrument so that you can actually direct this energy uh, for healing? Well, the best thing I, I can recommend is learn basic pranic healing, mm -hmm. and you'll get all the, the fundamental teachings. But there's energy or prana all around us. Remember what I said before, we're swimming in an ocean of prana? Same thing. We get prana from the sun. We get prana from the air, from our environment. We get prana from the ground or from Mother Earth. And then we also get different types of spiritual prana that when, when we meditate, we have an ability to access and to connect to. I noticed what you're doing with your hands, and uh, l let me know if I'm on or off here. Um, I'm noticing that people that are doing energy healing, their hands mm. becomes like an antenna. Mm -hmm. Is that is that accurate? Um, I've I've heard it put bef uh, put like this before that when a healer develops their palm chakras, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We have we have palm chakras in the center of our hand. When we've developed them to a very high degree, they become like energetic MRI machines. Mm -hmm. So in pranic healing, we never diagnose, we never treat, we never say, "Hey, you have cancer." But doing this kind of work for a long enough period of time. I'm able to tap into somebody's energy body. Mm -hmm. This is a skill. I'm not gifted. This is a skill that I've developed and refined over the years of doing pranic healing that I can go, wow, there's a lot of dirty, congested energy in this particular part of the person's body, their organs, their chakra system. And then as a healer, knowing the protocols, that tells me, okay, it might be this. It might be cancer. It might be diabetes. Mm -hmm. It might be um, suicidal tendencies, right? Whatever the case may be. So, um, so yeah. All right, so I've seen people able to do this in a way that there are immediate results. Mm -hmm. um, have, have you had that experience? Mm -hmm. Sure. Now, when, when people experience that, I've noticed that people still don't believe it. <laughs> right. I mean, it's happening in front of you. Right. But people still question it, and they go, you know, I, I don't. I don't believe it. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, and, and that's fine. You don't have to believe in gravity, uh -huh. but it still affects you. Mm -hmm. You're still influenced by gravity. Oh, I don't believe in gravity. All right, jump so off the bridge. So do you have some examples where you were able to get those kind of results? Like um, the, the person believed it, but um, a story that I have early on in my pranic healing career back in Sarasota was very, very interesting. There was this woman who came in who had severe, um, severe lower back pain, and I later found out during the healing that she had... Um, she had her lower lumbar operated on. So I, I was basically just following the protocol for lower back pain. And I was like, you know, please, God, help heal her and allow me to be a channel for, for healing energy. And then it was very interesting. I'm not clairvoyant. I don't see subtle energies most of the time. 95% of the time, I don't see things. But in this one particular case, I was doing a, a particular colored prana that was projecting into her. And I could literally see the prana coming out of my hands going into her lower back, and I could literally see her vertebrae being adjusted. 
like literally snapped into place with no touch because pranic healing is a no touch energy modality. And I was like, that is really, really weird. And I actually heard clicks in her lower back. And she goes, what are you doing? And I go, nothing. I'm just following the protocol. Uh, you know, I'm almost done. And then as she got up, she goes, my back pain is completely gone. And I said, can you just do me a favor and like bend down and see if you can like touch your toes or something like that? And she was able to go all the way down. And I'd never heard from or saw that woman ever again, and even to this point, uh, almost 10 years later. But I was like, there's something to that. There's some magic to that. And maybe, you know, maybe like that totally changed her life. And it's like, it's cool. If I could be an instrument for her healing, great. But yeah, it's... um. There's many reasons why people don't believe things that are obvious, people, things that are right in front of them mm -hmm. that they don't believe. It's, it's fine. It's where they're at. Well, usually people, you know, people believe if they can satisfy their five senses, mm -hmm. sure. it, it becomes even more difficult for people if we're talking about something that's beyond the five senses. Right. Yeah. And, you know, I, I noticed that because I've done some shows about UFOs and about you know, remote viewing and things like that, that people mm -hmm. just completely freak out. Even people that are actually open and awake and, and conscious. Right. Yeah. So this is probably a good, good segue to talk about spiritual uh, discernment. Yeah. Uh, wh why is that something that really interests Ugh. you right now? I'm, I'm curious. I could literally talk about this for hours and yeah. hours and hours. It, well, um, we've got whatever yeah. time we got. Yeah. Don't, we, don't worry we, about the time. Um, all right, Steve. So, so, this is what I, this is what I'm, I'm realizing. Um, when somebody goes on the spiritual path and they start opening up different energy centers, energy channels, and they, and they start getting cleaner, things start transforming in their life. They start perceiving the world member from a higher level rather mm -hmm. than from being in the matrix. They're kind of outside of the matrix and they're starting to observe things. And there comes a point that they start seeing the mistakes and challenges and problems and fumblings and shortcomings of other people. That's where it starts coming into negative pride because your mind is sharper, your mind is clearer. So you can see somebody else's suffering and you're like, dude, I know why you're suffering. Why? Th here's your solution right here. This is what you need to do in order to stop your suffering. But they don't do it. And then that frustrates the person. So being on, being on the spiritual path for the past 15 years, I've seen a tremendous amount of things. I've been to many, many different workshops. I've met healers from every walk of life, every, not every healing modality, but a lot of the major ones. And I've realized when somebody awakens, when somebody opens up and, and they're like, you know what, like you were saying, this is, this, there has to be more to life than this. This is boring, this is mundane. Where's the excitement? Where's the love? Where's the inner peace? Where are all these things that I keep hearing about? So then they start going into the spiritual path. But here's the thing, they're entering uncharted territory. They have absolutely no idea what to believe, what to question, how to question it. From, and, and ironically enough, the people within the spiritual path that have been doing it for a while, they're very loving, they're very generous, they're very giving, and they want to just give anything and everything to a person. And that's not always the best thing. So I have a lot of friends, because I'm a spiritual guy, because I'm always doing this work, I kind of influence and the people around me to get more interested in meditation, more interested in energy healing, more interested in improving their lives on a spiritual level. And then I start seeing them going to different workshops, different seminars, different, um, they start reading different books. And then they just have this mosh page of like techniques and theories and none of it congeals, none of it comes together. Like that woman, 200 hours of energy healing in a workshop, what did you get out of it? She has no idea. So discernment basically means discernment comes, well, discernment is very much focused in the Buddhist tradition, right? We're not getting religious here. We're just saying what is. And then also discernment is talked about. Well, it's the, all over religion as yeah, well. Yeah, and Christianity mm -hmm. as well. But discernment means seeing something clearly and being able to judge something accurately. So within the world of pranic healing, we develop something called scanning or feeling the subtle energies of something. And everything has energy, whether it's mental, emotional, physical, spiritual, everything has energy connected to it. So through the process of scanning, we as pranic healers, we as individuals can start determining if some, what someone tells us is accurate 
or not, which is a huge advantage for our own spiritual and personal development. Because somebody can say, hey, you need to see this guru in town. He is the greatest thing since sliced bread. You know, you're going to get, you know, immediately healed and you're going to become enlightened and all this other stuff. There are technologies that we've developed within pranic healing to scan or feel the truthfulness of that statement because everything is energy. Also, if somebody says, I've been doing this great meditation practice and I'm and my chakras are huge. They're super developed, very, very powerful. And then all you do is scan the chakra. Scan the person when they started three months ago. Let's say they started the practice three months ago. Heart chakra, solar plexus, ajna, throat. Okay, I feel it there three months ago. Where is it now? The same. So where's, where is your, where's your proof? Where did you, how did you reach that conclusion? I just, just because someone told me? Well, that doesn't work. Just because yeah. somebody wrote so, it doesn't, interesting. doesn't mean anything. So, so I have a similar system. It's, it is different, hmm? but it's very simple. And um, I didn't always have this system. Mm -hmm. sure. <laughs> but I have it now, and I use it uh, all day long. So it goes like this. When I'm tuned into myself, like I'm tuned into my heart, mm -hmm. and um, my heart is open, mm -hmm. and um, like that. <laughs> loving, generous. Yeah, yeah loving, mm -hmm. yeah. Then, if it feels good, then it's the right thing to do. If it doesn't, mm -hmm. it's not. And I, I noticed that I always had this, except I was more focused on, be, before I kind of become awake and conscious and on this journey, mm -hmm. I always knew, because I felt all the things that I was about to do, that they were the wrong thing to do, but I did it anyway. Mm. Okay, right. So I wasn't that committed uh, to my higher self and to love. What I was committed to is a different feeling good. Does that make sense? I was, I was committed to making sure that whatever it is that I was doing protecting, protected me mm. from the pain I was unwilling to feel. Does that, sure. does that make sense? Sure. Okay, so, so since I kind of gave up that, 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 that whole notion that I didn't want to get in touch with that pain, I got in touch with the pain. Yeah, right. <laughs> and, and now I don't have to run from it anymore. It's, it's, it's like it's gone in a way. Mm -hmm. And um, I am, like when you said, I am reminded to this pain when I see it in other people. And I want to run over there and I want to shake him and go... <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Are you aware of what you're doing? But it doesn't work. You know. It it doesn't work. Yeah. Because because what 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 I'm what I'm doing now and, and it, it looks it looks kind of weird at first because I'm providing this leadership I feel to the world. Whoever is is wanting to view these shows, mm -hmm. are you going to be touched, moved, and inspired or not? Mm. And I'm not attached one way or another. Right. But. But here is the thing. I can't control you. I can't control the viewers. If I could, you know, we would have 100 million viewers. Right, right. <laughs> you know, sure. I, I can't do it. So, so all I can do is have control over who I'm being, mm -hmm. you know, in any moment. Mm -hmm. And do the best I can and to, and to grow as a human being. And how do I grow? Like have somebody like you mm. um, on a show because you make a difference. And I wanted to acknowledge you because you represent what I call the younger generation. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you, you yeah. know, you, I, I wish that I could see a lot more and experience a lot more people like, like yourself. And you have a lot of friends and they are your age. And it puts a smile on my face because I haven't been able to see that that much. Mm. You know what I mean? For some yeah. reason, our younger generation are into this you know, into the games, into whatever. Right. And it completely takes them over. It's like they don't have time. Like, like I have family and I have um, my 22-year-old um, um, relative that, that I'm trying to help right now. And he's lost. And, and I don't really know how to help him mm. right now other than I'm going to ask him to watch this show and see what he thinks about maybe learning about meditation. Got it. Because what he's doing right now, he's chasing his, his girlfriend. 
and lower nature. Yeah, and uh, it's all about sex, and that's all he seems to care about right now. And I, and I'm reminding myself, you know, what were you doing when you were t when I was 22? Right. And I look and I go, I was basically doing the same thing. I, I didn't know anything. I was meditating different. about four to six hours a day around that time. When, I was when you were 22? Yeah. Yeah. So that's really amazing, yeah. you know, about you. Because it took me a while to get to where I am today, and I'm nowhere. But, it, but even that took me several decades to get so that I can have this conversation with you. So that's, that is so awesome, and I want to make sure that the viewers get this, that you're so young, and that, that you have this tool, and you have this ability to manipulate energy and help people and heal people and heal yourself mm -hmm. because it's part of this whole process. You, you're healing you and you're healing your girlfriend, you're healing kids, what, whatever. Mm -hmm. Your entire environment is affected mm. by this. Mm. And, um, you know, I, my daughter called me last night, well, in the evening, and she says, she sends me a text because what, right. she's course. similar age as you, and what she says, she says, she says, Dad, um, I'm lonely. Mm. Now, just the fact that she sent me that text, that already means so much to me. Because it means to me that I raised her right and that she is noticing what I'm doing in the world. Mm -hmm. Because she's able to send me a text and say, you know what it takes for a 30-year-old to say that, that I'm lonely? Yeah. And she's there with her two kids. And she says, would you like to come over and have dinner? Bring dinner and bring a movie. And I said, absolutely. Cool. So that's what we did last night. But, you know, that's awesome. And, and, and how is that missing? I mean, oh, my God. I mean, kids don't even have fathers and and mothers these days. Have you noticed? I have noticed. It's like, it's like people are having sex at 17, have a kid or two, uh, the guys are running away, <laughs> mm. you can't find them. Mm -hmm. and, it, and I'm so grateful. My daughter has a husband, you know, he's at work. Um, they do take care of their family. They love these two little kids, four-year-old and a one-year-old, oh my God. I was in this beautiful energy of, I guess what I would call family. Mm. And um, I really appreciate family. Uh, you know, I don't know about you or anybody else, but you talk about being in the presence of love. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I don't know how I can be, you know, all the relationships that I've ever been in uh, that I thought I was in love <laughs> <laughs> is in no comparison mm. to the family of love. That's, that's a beautiful point about, about love because love is emanating from the heart chakra. So the people that are closest to us it's an expression of love for them, our friends, our family members, tenderness, sweetness, and joy. And my teacher was always saying, how can you have oneness with God and oneness with all when you can't have oneness and harmony with those closest to you? How, can, how is that possible? Mm -hmm. How can you be, be aching and really have this profound compassion emanating from your system of somebody dying in Africa due to age or starvation when you're ignoring your family, when you're yelling at your family, when you're fighting with your wife or girlfriend, or, um, or you treat people like garbage. When you see a homeless person and you laugh at them and you point at them and you say, boy, must suck to be you, right? But you, you sit down and you meditate and you're like, oneness with God, oneness with all, right? Goes back to discernment. The person is delusional. Mm -hmm. They're delusional. That's why opening up the heart comes first, then the crown, then oneness with God, oneness with all. So let, let's just clarify one more time mm -hmm. about discernment. So um, does it have to do with the truth, like the truth of oneself? Mm. Or does it have to do with universal truth? Excellent question. Through my, through my understandings of the teachings I've been presented, there's levels of truth. So there's, there's levels of truth, as, and truth is dynamic. Truth is always changing. There are some truths, like um, the truth of uh, karma, law of karma, sowing and reaping, right? And there's different ways to interpret that truth and to look at it. So I would always recommend people do what they do their best to get to the highest level of truth as quickly as possible and live your life by that. So surrender your will to that and by surrendering your will to a greater power you will be empowered right so if you surrender yeah. to for instance the law of sowing and reaping like 
I want more love in my life. So I'm going to surrender to giving more love. And by giving more love, I'm now entitled to more love. I want more money in my life. So I'm going to give more money. And I'm going to receive more money. I want more. Um, I want greater spirits. This is a big one for me. I want higher spiritual teachings. I want higher awareness of how this mystical, magical, spiritual world we live and exist in, how that functions. So you know what? I'm going to find the highest spiritual teachings I can get my hands on and do my best to present that accurately to the world because I want to be entitled to that. So that goes to, to discernment of like, I look at this spiritual teacher and, and, and I want to follow him, or I look at this spiritual book or relationship book or personal development book. Look at where the source is coming from. Look at who created that product, that service, the book, the webinar, the spiritual class. Who is that person? Are you going to a relationship course where the person has been married for three, married three different times? What power are they going to have? Are you going to take a prosperity course from someone who has filed bankruptcy three times and is living out of their car? You gonna, you know, you gonna do that? Or are you gonna learn spirituality from somebody who has a very, very small crown chakra that lives a life of chaos and emotional instability? No. You, so you look where you discernment. Who do I go to? What do I want in my life? And who has what I want? And I'm gonna look into their lives. I'm gonna look into how they did it. That's what discernment does: seeing things clearly, seeing things as they are. Okay. So let me just take it, take it mm -hmm. from a different from a different area or a different spin. Okay. So, and I'm going to go to the internet okay. because there's everything, every, anything that you ever wanted to know. Anything. Is, anything. <laughs> doesn't matter. It's on the internet. internet. Just Google it. Mm -hmm. so, so you can just about, any question that anybody has, you could, you could look it up on the internet and you could find as much as you want about for it and you could get just as much against it. Right. So if that's what you're going to do, which is called, I guess, analysis. Yeah. How do you make a choice? Um, that's actually an excellent question. And I would have to say, um, that's a really good question. I would have to say, through the blessings of God in my life, I've been karmically entitled to have very powerful, very simple, very digestible teachings presented to me. That was my good karma. And if we want to talk about past lives, I sowed seeds, I planted seeds in previous lifetimes that have manifested into this incarnation. I planted seeds of maybe spiritual teachings at some point, maybe doing energy healing at some point, maybe doing some kind of love or something, and then this lifetime I'm karmically entitled to be presented with higher teachings and the, the ability of discerning and all this other stuff. So uh, that's, that's a tough one, like where does somebody go? Uh, because it, I would say the reason I found what I found in life is because I was very, very focused. I wanted truth. I wanted higher levels of truth. I wanted to understand spirituality. And I was never satisfied when somebody would say something incomplete or brush me off. I would go around them. I go under them. I go over them. I do whatever it took to figure out how this world works and how I'm connected to this world and to my higher self. And little by little, right, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Mm. So I can't really give a, a clear bang, bang answer to that. Or like, <laughs> yeah, if you want higher spiritual truths, you, you Google, how do I know how to meditate? And then you hit enter, and it's like you get one million views, and it's like, okay, which teacher is good, right? And mm. through scanning, through discernment, I can go, crown chakra of the teacher, wow, huge crown chakra. I'm going to plug in with that guy. Oh, wait a minute, I go to the next teacher. Wow, really dirty aura, dirty thoughts, dirty emotions. Yeah, I probably don't want to plug into this guy. Yeah, but that's you. Right. But, but, but you, you dedicated your life to this, and you probably spent, what, over a decade already. Mm -hmm. um, the general public isn't going to do that. So, so my question was really um, not for the expert. Mm -hmm. uh, for the layperson. You know, the, the, you know, the person that's just navigating life, and uh, there's all this stuff that's coming at everybody, <laughs> millions of us every day, mm -hmm. we're bombarded with stuff, uh, thanks to yeah. technology. Sure. And um, you know, how do you how do you navigate? Ask questions. Mm -hmm. Ask questions. Keep asking questions. When somebody presents you so, with information, so I'm going to go back to what uh, something I said like a half hour ago. So, mm -hmm. so do you, what do you think about? Not not that my method is the method because it isn't. Right. But just checking into if everybody can check into themselves, mm -hmm. like 
you know, if they connected really to their love energy, like they, they really open, yeah. If it feels good, what, whatever it is that they're about to do or say or choose, yeah. if it feels good, okay. if, if that's connected to their higher self, isn't our higher self always wants the best for us, would you say? The higher self wants... As you say, does God always want the best for us? The higher self wants the highest return of investment. Mm -hmm. The higher self pours, as my understanding, pours a portion of itself into the incarnated self, mm -hmm. which drips down into the mental, emotional, and physical mm -hmm. body. So the higher self is like doing it as an investment to learn and to grow and to evolve, right? So it's like, well, you could use the higher self energy to live a, a hedonistic lifestyle. Go out, have a sex with a bunch of women, do a bunch of drugs, be mean, cruel, kick, ba you know, smack babies, kick dogs, whatever, right? And live, live how you want to live. And then the higher soul, as the body dies, pulls some of that energy back and goes, well, wasn't a good investment in, in that incarnation. Or while you have these physical, emotional, mental bodies, you can put them to good use. You can alleviate the suffering of, a, of other people. You can go out there and be like, how can I serve? How can I love more? How can I contribute more? But I would ask you a question about the, if it feels right, go for it. Well, have there been opportunities in your life that you really want to have an orgasm and it felt appropriate to you? And I really, really want to feel that orgasm. And then you realize, wow, I had that orgasm with the wrong person. So how do you discern, how do you know the difference of a good feeling pointing you in the right direction and a feeling that is actually getting you in trouble? How do you know? So that's why I wouldn't necessarily base everything just off of how you feel. Use your mental faculties as well. Ask questions, break mm. it down, mm. analyze, dissect, figure it out. Mm. Once you do all that and it still feels good, move forward. But I've done a lot of things based on feeling that have almost ruined my life. Almost. Mm. I'm still here. Still, you know, still kicking. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, interesting. So, you know, maybe, maybe I didn't present this in a, in a really clear way. I, I, I don't know. Because it, it really seems to be working for me right now in terms of how I make choices. Mm -hmm. But I really have to listen and I really have to be connected to my spirit. Um, you know, if I'm not connected, you know, then it's a whole different Absolutely. ball game. Absolutely, sure. Um, and, you know, I've been there, done that, and, uh, you know, done all the things that you were just speaking of, so I'm not going to repeat all of them. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's just, it's just, it's, it's interesting to me that Maybe this is simpler because I think we like to make things so complicated. The closer you get to God, the simpler yeah. things become. Yeah, it, it, just, it, it just seems really simple to me now. I'm just speaking for me. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know how this works or would work for anybody else, but it seems to be working for me because I'm just in touch with it, and if it feels right, I'll do it. And, and I had people that conned me before, and I could mm. tell. You felt I mean, that. I felt it that Got this it. is not the right thing to do, but I did it anyway. Sure. Because I justified it for, you know, other, because of greed and things mm -hmm. you, yeah. you know, the lower. The lower nature and, taking nature, over. Yeah. And, 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 and I seem, somehow I seem to have a handle on that now. Mm. You know, I, I, don't, I, I don't know how else to explain are, it. Are there like, for example, I, I, used to, I used to make so much money I didn't know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. And I didn't pay my bills. Does that make sense? No. I wanted people to call me 10 times, mm -hmm. you know, and the, the ones that screamed the most, the, the ones that got, got paid. paid yeah. And guess how my life is today? I pay all my bills and it's a discipline. And I go like, I have it in my calendar. It tells me when to pay it. And when it comes up, I'll just pay it. Mm -hmm. And I cannot tell you how much easier. I mean, that's just one area of my life, mm -hmm. but how much easier my life has become. Mm -hmm. because of that. It's just a practice. So did you, did you start paying your bills on time, <clears throat> week in and week out, month out, month out, because you felt like it, or you've sat down? No, your... because, because I, I, now I look forward to it. Now I don't see it as a paying my bills is like, how dare you? Right, 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 <laughs> yeah. How dare you? You want money from me. I, I see it as, oh my God, they doing a service. Um, you know, for me and to humanity, and oh my God, <laughs> I want to pay that because yeah. it makes it makes yeah. absolute sense. So let me ask and you: it's, did you... It's, it's energy, and I, yeah. I am I am giving them energy, and they're giving me energy. Did you change your perception about it? And yeah, then, right. Yeah, so absolutely. your perception changed first, then your emotions followed suit. The mental mm -hmm. body is more powerful, mm, not in all cases, but 
if you change your perception about something, everything else follows suit. It's called right viewpoint. Wrong viewpoint, wrong everything else. Wrong thoughts, wrong emotions, wrong actions, wrong livelihood, wrong spiritual but practice. But like, that's an example I have for clarity. Like you, you've been talking about clarity. I yes. mean, that, it's so clear to me. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. like, it's crystal clear. I mean, there's just no other way to do this. Mm -hmm. Unless you want pain. And if you want pain, then I shouldn't pay the bill because <laughs> I guarantee you it will be very painful. And now you can look at somebody else going through what you went through 10, 15, 20 years ago. You can look at it clearly and go, I know exactly why you're suffering. If you just did this, this, and this, your suffering would be over, right? But it's in every area of our life, not just yeah, financial. Of course. It's in every area. Of course. So, so I wish we had like another hour or two, but guess what? Yeah. We don't. So this is what I call a conscious hour. It, it, it felt, felt to me like five minutes. Time disappears, right? Sure. And so I want to, again, acknowledge you for who you're being in the world and how could I go some you, my teacher? Yeah, you're helping, you're helping people every day. I know you do. Mm -hmm. I can feel it. And um, I want to acknowledge you for being where you are today at a younger generation <laughs> and that you represent, um, you know, millions of young people that um, can make a huge difference in, in their kid's life and in their own life. Um, maybe doing some of the things that you're teaching. Mm. So I appreciate you and thank you for being on our network. And for the viewers out there, if uh, anything that we talked about here today or anything that you experienced that touched, moved, and inspired you, please go to ConsciousEvolutionMedia.com and engage with us um, also on our channel on YouTube, which is also Conscious Evolution Media. <laughs> Very fitting. So, Thank you so much for everybody. Thank you for everybody for being here. And um, I love you all, and we'll see you next week. Yay! Yeah. High five. Mm.